Okay, so we're going to pick up where we left off on the uh, previous tutorial. We're going to do another example using these energy bar charts. So this one's a little bit more complicated, so we'll try to hit as many different ideas as possible here. So we have a 10 kilogram cat is launched horizontally at a certain speed, so there's our initial speed, uh, from a height of 6 meters. And for each meter, we're told it falls, the cat feels 10 newtons of drag. So drag is going to increase the more it falls. So we want to complete an energy bar chart for the following heights. So there's two different examples, okay, where the initial height is zero, and then for B, where the final, I'm sorry, not the initial height, but from the final height is zero for two for part A, and the final height is zero for part B. Okay, so we want to look at the total energy before the event. The event is as it falls, okay? That's the during. Then we want to look at what's happening after it has fallen a height of, or it's at a final height of two meters. We've got to be careful about that. I was almost going to say we fell two meters, but it's at a height, final height of two meters. So we ask ourselves, what types of energy does it have? Well, is it moving? Yes, it's moving. So it has initial kinetic energy, and it would just be one half v naught squared. Okay, so rather than like, unlike the last problem where we were given initial energy, here we got to calculate it. Again, we have a, that's one half mass of 10 times 4 squared. Don't forget to square the 4, and we get 80 joules. So I'm going to count up again 8, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So we have 80 joules of kinetic to start with. Do we have any potential? In other words, are we above the ground? Well, that's just mg. Why not? So again, the cat is 10, G is 10, and our initial height, I believe, is 6 meters. So we have um, 600. Okay, whoops. I'm going to change my, I didn't think ahead on this. So we're going to say each bar is 100, okay? So my bad. So we have very little kinetic. i got to go down here. 80 would be rough, a little below that bar. I'm going to go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So our potential is 600. There's no spring involved, so we're going to ignore that. So we're going to ask ourselves, is any work done external? So our system, again, is the Earth slash cat. So as any external forces acting on it. Well, the gravity of the Earth is not an external, it's internal. There is drag, and drag is coming from the air that is not part of our system, so that is work. So we would calculate the work done, all right, so we're going to, off to the side, the work done is a force due to the drag, let's put a D for drag there, times whatever distance. So, what we're looking for is, well, what distance, what's the force? Well, it says 10 newtons for every meter. Okay, so we've got to do little calculations. We have 10 newtons per meter. How many meters are we falling if our, fall in, if our final height is 2 meters? Well, we've fallen 4 meters. Okay, and then we've got to multiply it by the distance it felt that, which is an additional 4 meters. So, in other words, we've got 160 joules of work done by friction, okay, um, hold on a second, okay, sorry about that, I just wanted to double check the math, and technically, um, since the displacement is the opposite direction of the uh, force, we got to put a negative in there, so we, we can't overlook that, so on our chart, we're going to put about 160, so that's going to be negative work, okay, so let's put negative 160 joules. So essentially, we have a total before it falling of 680 joules of energy in the forms of kinetic and potential. We're going to lose 160 of it. In fact, we can anticipate that we're going to lose 160 of it into Q. So let's go up to here, and we're going to put 160. So what is left for kinetic and potential? Well, potential is always based on height, right? So if we're at a height, final height of 2, then our potential at this point is just going to be 10 times 10 times 2, or 200. So we're going to have 200 joules of potential, 1, 2. Okay, that's the nice thing about potential. We don't even know what, 
the, remember, the cat's not falling straight down. The cat is falling at a trajectory of parabolic motion. We don't really care about the forward motion. All we care about is the change in height to calculate potential. So what does that leave for kinetic? Well, we have 200 plus 160 is 360. 360 subtracted from 680 is, I believe, 320. 1, 2, 3, plus a little bit. So there is our kinetic, 320. Okay, so why do we care about the 320? Well, now we can figure out how fast the cat must be moving. Okay, so all we do is we say, I'm going to just solve this algebraically, the final velocity of the cat is going to be equal to twice its kinetic energy divided by its mass. All I've done is rearranged 1 half mv squared equals ke. So I've got square root of 2 times 320 divided by 10. Let's see, 2 times 320 is 640. 640 divided by 10 is 64. Oh, that's nice. 8 meters per second. Okay. So prior to doing con conservation of energy, we would have to figure out, okay, a bunch of different things. We'd have to figure out its horizontal velocity after the, t um, the time, which is easy. It doesn't change. We would have to figure out its vertical velocity. We'd have to take into account friction, and it just becomes a royal pain in the butt to do using kinematics and the laws of motion. This cuts through all of that and makes the problem very simple. All right, so now we can ask the same question. What's it going to be? when it gets to the bottom. In other words, the final height is zero. So our initial conditions are still the same. We're still starting with 80 joules of kinetic. We're still starting with 600 joules of potential. Okay, no spring. Okay, now our work done is still gonna be uh, it's going to be different. So I'm just going to fill it over here. We have 80 joules of that. Our initial potential is zero. Or it's, excuse me, this is, I want prime. Our initial potential, I don't know why I didn't have that. Initial gravitational is um, 600. Okay, so our final is going to be zero, but I'll come back to that. So how would we calculate the uh, amount of work done by friction? Well, it's 10 newtons per meter We've fallen six meters now, and then the work done is so our net force is 60 newtons. Malt over six meters gives us 360 joules. So we've lost quite a bit of energy to friction. So we're going to have, and that's negative 360, or the Q is 360, the work done is negative 360. Um, so one, two, three. So I'm going to go down halfway. Negative 360, work done. So that 360 is going to go to Q, which is lost to the system, so it's not even part of our system, but we've got to keep track of it. Our potential is zero, so what does that leave for kinetic? Well, that's pretty easy. We have 680 total, 360, and we could, two ways to look at it. We could say 680 total, we've lost 360 units of energy, there's zero potential because we're at zero height, so that's going to leave us with 240 of kinetic. And now that we know that it's 240 kinetic, we just simply do 2 times 240, radical that, all over 10. 480 divided by 10 is 48. Radical 48 is about 7 meters per second. Okay. So we can easily calculate the speed. Now, the interesting thing here is that if we didn't have friction, let's say it was we can ignore friction, we'd expect it to be going a lot faster. In that case, if we had 680 to begin with, right, that's our total energy. At the end, after it falls, that's going to equal our total energy after. Zero, it would be all kinetic plus zero potential. So if I want to calculate the speed, it would be 2 times 680 divided by 10, which would be significantly greater, right? 2 times 60, 680 is 1360 divided by 10 is 136. Square root of that is a little over 12. So we're going significantly faster. So take a look at these problems carefully because we're going to be doing a lot of work with this. And then when we, when we introduce springs, it's just a, another term to our equations. All right, so let's do one other problem here. We'll do this more generic. Okay. Sorry, this thing is not scrolling up. Let me do that. So we have an arrow. It is fired with some velocity v. 
okay, at some angle, and it lands at a height h below where it was fired. If the place where the arrow hits the ground is given to be zero, okay, write expressions for the arrow's total energy when it is shot from the bow and just before it leaves the ground. So in other words, if I want to draw a picture of this, I'll draw it over here. We are firing, here's the ground, we are firing it at some angle, theta, it's going to take a trajectory and it's going to land lower somewhere here. Okay. And this we're going to define as zero as our height. Okay. Where you choose zero again is arbitrary. This is some delta y above it. And we want to understand uh, the total energy. So what do we have? Well, the initial, we just think in terms of what possible energy we do. We have kinetic and do we have gravitational potential? And the answer is yes. How do we calculate that kinetic? One half mv naught squared, and then what's our initial potential? mgy naught. Notice the angle doesn't come into this. We don't care what the angle is, it's irrelevant. And then at the end, what do we have? After it hits the ground, or just before it hits the ground, because after the ground is work done on it, that's external, so we're gonna not treat that. Well, we're at a height of zero, so all it is is kinetic energy prime. In other words, we just it's all kinetic energy. And again, the object might be moving at some angle because it's projectile motion, but the kinetic energy doesn't care what angle it's moving. You just want the total energy, and that's really nice. So now we could ask ourselves, how fast is it moving here? Well, if we use conservation of energy, this is super easy. All we do is use, there's no external work. Our system, again, is assumed to be the arrow and the earth. So there's no external work. We're ignoring drag here. All I have to do is say my initial energy, whoops, which is in the form of potential and kinetic, has to equal my final energy, which is all kinetic. So I'll put a V prime squared there. So I'm solving for V prime squared. So notice the masses are in each term that cancels out turns out the mass of the object doesn't matter here. And if I solve this carefully, right, I'm going to multiply both sides by 2. Okay, so that 2's cancel out there. I'm going to have on this side uh, v naught squared plus 2g y naught equals v prime squared. Oh, that was easy. So v prime, oh wait, this looks very familiar. Isn't this kind of like our v squared equals v naught squared plus 2a delta x? Holy moly, that's exactly right. And that's not a coincidence because, as it turns out, forward velocity isn't going to change. There's no force acting on it. So all the change in velocity is really due to the vertical part by gravity. The conservation of energy just makes this a whole lot easier to work out. And that's pretty cool. Okay, so I'm going to stop there. We'll have more practice with this and hopefully some, uh, and definitely some labs with this.